Night falls in the Florida Everglades. The swamp, usually alive with chirping frogs and scurrying mammals, falls eerily quiet. What could silence an ecosystem so completely? Emerging from the marsh is a camouflaged giant, an 18-foot Burmese python, coiled and ready to strike. This apex predator is not native to Florida, yet it now rules these wetlands. In a state famous for alligators, a new reptilian menace has taken the throne. How did a snake from the other side of the world wreak havoc in Florida's backyard? The Burmese python, Python bivitatus, is one of the largest snakes on Earth. Native to the jungles and marshes of Southeast Asia, these constrictors can reach extraordinary sizes. Adults in Florida commonly measure six to nine feet, and the largest captured stretched over 18 feet long. They are thick-bodied, patterned with dark brown blotches that help them blend into the underbrush. Why have they become such a problem in Florida? For one, their size and behavior give them free reign. A full-grown python has almost no natural predators in Florida, aside from the occasional alligator or human. They are also prolific breeders. A single female can lay 20 to 50 eggs every other year, and she can live for two decades or more. Unlike many predators that rely on specific prey, these pythons are generalists with slow metabolisms. They can go months without food and then gorge when prey is available. It's the perfect recipe for an invasive species, large, hardy, hungry, and reproducing rapidly. Yet, Burmese pythons didn't slither to Florida on their own. So how did they get here? Florida's python problem began innocently enough, with pet lovers and exotic animal enthusiasts. Burmese pythons were first brought to Florida in the 1970s through the exotic pet trade. Tiny hatchling pythons, just a foot long, were sold cheaply in pet shops. In fact, during the early 2000s, over 144,000 Burmese pythons were imported into the US within five years, some for as little as $20 each. Enthralled by owning a giant snake, many people bought them, only to discover a few years later that their cute baby python had grown into a 10, 15, or even 20-foot behemoth. Caring for a snake that can crush a full-grown turkey or needs rabbits for dinner is no easy task. Overwhelmed owners faced a tough choice. What do you do with a 100-pound snake in your living room? Unfortunately, many chose to simply release the pythons into the wild. Dumped in the swamps and canals, these pet pythons found a warm, welcoming environment in South Florida and began fending for themselves. Then came a dramatic twist, Hurricane Andrew. In 1992, this Category 5 storm tore through South Florida, flattening buildings, including at least one python breeding facility. The hurricane's destruction resulted in hundreds more snakes being let loose into the Everglades. It was as if a bomb of pythons had exploded across the landscape. By the late 1990s, park rangers and residents started seeing large pythons in and around Everglades National Park. In 2000, biologists confirmed that the Burmese python had established a breeding population in the wild. In other words, the invasion had begun. From a few escaped pets and an act of nature, the pythons multiplied exponentially. Sightings went from a rarity to a common occurrence. Over 30,000 python sightings were reported just between 2008 and 2010. The stage was set for an ecological upheaval. But what happens when a foreign predator settles into an ecosystem that never knew it? The Florida Everglades were about to find out, and the results were devastating. Once Burmese pythons made themselves at home in the Everglades, the effects on native wildlife were staggering. These giant constrictors are apex predators, and they began to feast on Florida's native animals. Small and medium-sized mammals, raccoons, opossums, rabbits, foxes, started disappearing at alarming rates. Visitors and researchers noticed that nights in some parts of the Everglades, once busy with the glowing eyes of marsh rabbits and the chatter of rodents, 
had gone nearly silent. Was it the pythons? Science says yes. A 2012 study linked severe declines in mammal populations directly to the spread of Burmese pythons. What are these pythons eating? Virtually anything they can catch. Inside the stomachs of captured pythons, officials have found remains of deer, waddling birds, turtles, alligators, and even endangered species like the Key Largo wood rat. One infamous incident in 2005 made headlines. Park rangers discovered a dead 13-foot python that tried to swallow a 6-foot alligator whole and burst in the process. Both predator and prey died in that clash, a grim illustration that these snakes are audacious enough to take on Florida's native alligators. Beyond direct predation, pythons are also displacing native predators. They compete with animals like foxes, bobcats, and panthers for food. They even compete with alligators. Sometimes the gator wins. Large gators have been known to kill and eat pythons. But often the python escapes or even kills juvenile gators. In essence, the Burmese python has become an invasive apex predator, sitting near the top of the food web without the checks and balances that native species have evolved with. The result is an ecological imbalance. Prey species plummet and the effects ripple outward. Florida has truly never seen an invasive species quite like this. From microscopic parasites to invasive plants, many non-natives cause trouble. But an 18-foot constrictor that devours the native fauna is on another level. And it's not just a problem in the deep wilderness. These snakes have slithered into canals, backyards, and outskirts of cities near the Everglades. Pets like cats and small dogs can fall victim. And although attacks on humans are extremely rare, the thought of a giant python in the neighborhood is enough to send shivers down anyone's spine. The Burmese python earned the title of Florida's most invasive species through sheer size, appetite, and destructive impact on the environment. The established range of Burmese pythons in Florida currently spans the southern part of the peninsula, from the Everglades up to around Lake Okeechobee. Essentially, they dominate South Florida's marshes and wetlands. But could they go beyond? This question worries scientists and wildlife officials. Could Burmese pythons slither their way across more of the American South? The answer isn't fully known, but researchers have tried to predict it. On one hand, Florida's warm subtropical climate has been key to the python's survival. Cold weather is their enemy. In 2010, an unusual cold snap in Florida killed many wild pythons suggesting they struggle when temperatures drop to near freezing. In other words, once you get into North Florida or Georgia where winters get frosty, wild pythons might not make it through the cold spells. This has been somewhat reassuring. Nature's thermostat could limit the invasion. Indeed, when pythons occasionally turn up far north of their known range, they are often believed to be escaped or released pets, not part of a breeding population. On the other hand, climate change could expand the python's comfort zone. As average temperatures rise, areas that were once too cold for pythons might become habitable. A US geological survey study took the climate of the python's native Asian range and overlaid it on the US map. The startling result? Huge swaths of the United States, from Florida and Texas across to California, and even up the coasts to Delaware and Oregon, have climates that could support Burmese pythons. So far, the good news is that breeding populations seem confined to South Florida's subtropical habitats. But if we imagine the worst-case scenario, these snakes could one day populate wetlands across the Gulf Coast states and beyond. Will we one day see pythons in the marshes of Louisiana or the Carolinas? It's not impossible. Preventing that outcome is a major motivation behind Florida's aggressive containment efforts. The pythons may have a head start in the Everglades, but wildlife managers are determined not to let them take the rest of the country by storm. Facing a problem of this scale, Floridians have had to get creative and determined in fighting back. What do you do when tens of thousands of giant invasive snakes are hiding in nearly impenetrable swamps? 
The battle against the Burmese python has become a high priority. 24-7 effort involving state agencies, scientists, and ordinary citizens alike. One major strategy is organized removal programs. In 2017, the state ramped up removal by establishing python hunter teams. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission and the South Florida Water Management District now hire trained contractors to hunt pythons full-time. Florida has also enlisted the public in this fight. Every year, the state hosts the Florida Python Challenge, an event inviting anyone brave enough to try their hand at catching pythons. Prizes and bounties are offered for the most and biggest snakes caught. This snake rodeo has drawn national attention, with participants from all over trying to help wrangle pythons while raising awareness about the issue. Even alligators have been fighting back. There are reports of gators preying on small or medium pythons, suggesting native predators might slowly adapt to the invaders. It's a bit of an ironic hope that Florida's original king of the swamp may help keep the new king in check. New laws and policies have been implemented as well. It is now illegal to own or sell Burmese pythons in Florida, and they're listed as a prohibited species. The US government banned their import nationwide in 2012 under the Lacey Act after recognizing the threat they pose. Pet owners who can't care for a python can turn it over to an exotic pet amnesty program, no questions asked, to prevent further releases. These rules aim to cut off the supply of new invasive pythons and emphasize responsible pet ownership. After all, this whole crisis began with irresponsible releases. Closing that chapter is crucial to avoiding repeat scenarios. It's an uphill battle. For every snake removed, many more are still out there hiding. But thanks to these efforts, thousands of pythons that would otherwise be breeding and eating native wildlife have been taken out of the ecosystem. The work is tough and may need to continue indefinitely. Can we ever truly eradicate Burmese pythons from Florida? Wildlife experts say probably not. Complete elimination is likely impossible now that they are so widespread. However, with sustained control, the goal is to contain the python population keep it from expanding further, and mitigate its impacts on native species. In other words, we might not get rid of every python, but we can stop Florida's worst invasive species from getting even worse. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.